HTTP, DNS, TCP, file support, fully configurable templates, large scale scanning, out of band detection, and easily writing your own template. All of these features and more we're going to go over with Nuclear today and their awesome user guide. So what is Nuclear? If you don't know already, it's a vulnerability scanner based on templates written by the community or even by you. Yes, it's not that difficult. I have a full templating guide up on my channel as well if you're interested. But today I wanted to explore the wild and wacky options that Nuclear has to offer. I'm sure that a lot of you will have gone through the basic scans already, so I'm not going to go through those. But of course, we can do normal nuclei on a simple URL. You can add specific templates that maybe you have written yourself, or you might only want to run specific templates like the CVEs and the exposures templates. But you can also, I don't know if you know this, but Custom template GitHub repos are downloaded under the GitHub directory. So if you ever create a custom template GitHub repository, then you can find that as follows. Similarly, you can have a list of URLs which you can run across or you can run with workflows. Now, nuclear filters, let's say that you don't want to run any specific vulnerability, scan any specific template. Well, templates are usually consist of tags as well, and we can filter based on of those tags. We can have a severity filter, where we wanna based on the severity of the templates ran, or the author based on who has written them. By default, these filters are applied on the installed path of the templates and can be customized with manual template path input. As we can see right here, if we want to run the tag CVE, we can add the tag CVE flag and the end of our nuclei command. And we can also, as you can see here, we can combine this with a directory of templates that we want to run in this example, exposures as well. Multiple filters can work together. This is the AND condition. Below all the examples, this example runs all of the templates with CVE tags and has critical or high severity and genic as author of the template. So critical or high severity, author genic tags CVE. We can see this in there, but as you can imagine that might get complex after a while. So what did Nuclei invent for that? Template condition flags, awesome as well. As you can see right here, we can contain, we can filter on contain for specific ID, tag, name, and here we can then set the AND or the OR filters in, and it might make things a little bit more readable when you're running bigger scans. Supported fields are an ID, name, description, tags, author, severity, protocol, HTTP method, body, matcher type, extractor type and description so as you can see we can go very far with this all of these every key value pair from the template metadata from the template metadata section is also available now all of this can as you might have seen before be combined with your logical or and end operators similarly all filters are supported in workflows as well so just so you know, rate limits, this is a very important one. If you ever use Nuclei, there are three types of rate limits. The flag rate limit, that is the normal amount of requests that it can send, the total amount of requests that it can send given a certain time period. Whereas bulk size is the amount of hosts that it can talk to in parallel for each template. And we also have the C or the number of templates to process in parallel option as you might see later on these might become more important in fine-tuning the speed of your nuclear scans if you want you can always run any of these commands on hexpert.com believe me i won't be angry even if you kill the server just let me know so i can restart it please traffic tagging in many cases we might be required to add a custom header to our request well we can do that by setting a as you can see right here, 
we can set that in our config.yaml file and include it in our home directory slash dot config slash nucleate slash config.yaml but we can also include those with the header or dash h capital h that is flags here we also have those user agent headers and we can pass along even our xbug bounty headers or whatever these are important things to understand because you might be required to send a custom header with every request well this is the way to do it with nucleate let's say that you don't want to do certain templates that you don't want to include certain templates we're going to ignore the ignore list who fancy of us and we are going to look at the exclude templates and exclude tags work ways of working so one way that we can work with a specific exclude let's say that we don't want to scan anything from the cve blah 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 you know that that's a possibility we can add the dash exclude templates and then we add which yaml files we want to exclude again this also works with regex regex am i saying it right no i don't think i'm saying it right but it's okay let's just move on of course we want to exclude sometimes several templates as well we can exclude a complete folder as we can see right here but we can also exclude multiple folders and we might want to exclude certain tags, certain YAML files with a tag, for example, XSS or SQL injection or remote code execution. We can filter on multiple tags as well, of course. Now, one last thing that we can do is we can also include tags. This is going to override the nuclear ignore and we're going to be able to include these tags even though they might be in nuclear ignore. Uncover, you might be wondering what uncover is. Well, uncover is, if you don't know it yet, uh, something by Project Discovery as well. It uses many different search engines, which you can get a key upon to find exposed domains towards the internet. Well, Nuclear can work with those exposed domains, of course, and we can chain Nuclear with our Uncover. Yeah, Uncover, I always have to look at the name. As you can see right here, we have an example using the Nuclear ID with Uncover vulnerability ID through Shodan. So we also need to have our keys set for that properly, of course, our API keys, which we can export to our environment variables. <coughs> if we go look at that CVE 2021-26855, we can see that we have a metadata in it, which first of all requires a Shodan query with that vulnerability included of course and then we're going to execute nuclear with that specific cve of course we're going to chain that with uncover and that's going to be awesome because then we're automatically going to be looking for security vulnerabilities on maybe exposed servers through shodan for example in this case and we're going to try to exploit them with nuclear while we're at it Nuclear is a fast scanner. They have different strategies and here we see that bulk size and concurrency come back with the scan strategy as well. A little bit more about that scan strategy. As you can see we have host spray which will all templates are iterated over each target versus template spray each template is iterated over all targets. Automatically, we're going to do uh, the, for this case, it's going to apparently still do template spray if you do things automatically. But Nuclear itself recommends when you have a target list of less than a thousand to do template spray and when it's bigger than a thousand to do a host spray. So just so you know, if you're doing massive scans, try to fine tune that a little bit. And you can also play with your concurrency and your bulk size at the same time to maybe get some more performant results from it. Now, all in all, when we look at this, we can see that we have a, for example, config file. This config file might always need to send a specific header with all of the requests. That's why we put it in our config file. 
This is this very simple YAML file, as you can see. We can add more added headers by just adding more lines to here. We can see which templates we want to scan for, with what specific tags, with what tags to filter out, of course, and the allow list that we've talked about with the include templates and the exclude tags, exclude templates. These are things that we're not going to scan for the deny lists and our rate limit configurations right here. Now, Nuclear can also do reporting, automated reporting integrations with GitLab, GitHub, Jira, Markdown, Serif, Elasticsearch, and Splunk HEC. All you need to do is add the report config value there, and an example config file can be found provided by Nuclear. In here, we can see that we have a GitHub username owner token project name and issue label this is important of course because you want to have the right project let's say that you have 50 projects checked in you want to have the right project but also give it a proper label so you're able to recognize which ones come from an automated scan all of this is really cool and all but we want to maybe store the results in Elasticsearch as well or include Splunk HEC configuration. Of course, those are all possible. We just need to make sure that we include the issue, uh, the report config flag, I mean, our C flag, and the YAML file in which we describe how we want our reporting to be done. This might all seem like a lot of information, but I promise you just take your time to go through of this and you will find it a lot easier already. Again, go nuts on hexper.com and while you're scanning, you might be wondering how is my nuclear scanning do at the moment? Well, if you include the flag S for scan metrics, it will start a server on port 9092, which will it expose its metrics on, and you can query those metrics with this command, for example, and then you can see how far your nuclear scan is, which errors it encountered, how many hosts, etc. Passive scans are also possible, of course. It doesn't try to do URL requests, so you don't have to feed it URL, but you do need to have safe request data, of course. I hope that was clear. Now, Nuclear is not that complicated in and of itself. It's just that using all of the different combinations in the right situation is not an easy affair. I hope that this video shed some light on the use of Nuclear. And if you have any questions, I'd be more than happy to answer them in the comments below. Thank you very much, Amazing Hackers, and I will see you in the next one. Bye, Amazing Hackers.